SpaceX Starship is truly the greatest achievement in the history of the aerospace industry. It stands out not only for its advanced technology, but also for its gigantic size. However, the more advanced and larger the rocket, the more challenges it faces, especially how to transport it intact back to the launch site after a spectacular offshore landing. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. Starship is the largest rocket ever built at 121 meters in height and 9 meters in diameter. Of course, with the rocket's evolution, those numbers will be increased significantly. While the Starship's giant size can help it bring more payload, cutting the cost and turnaround time, this poses some challenges for the transport phase. The transportation of such large components requires careful planning and coordination, especially considering the potential for weather disruptions or other logistical challenges at the launch site. Since Starship is in its early stages of development, we've only seen SpaceX roll out it to the launch site before launch or test. SpaceX transports the rocket to the launch site using a combination of specialized vehicles and infrastructure designed to handle its massive size and weight. Normally, the Starship and its booster, Super Heavy, are separately transported to the launch pad using a massive transport vehicle known as the Self-Propelled Modular Transporter, SPMT. This vehicle is capable of moving the heavy and oversized components across the launch facility at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. Once at the launch pad, the Starship is positioned for integration with ground support equipment. This includes connecting to fuel lines and other necessary systems for pre-launch checks and static fire tests. However, as part of SpaceX's efforts towards Starship reuse, streamlining operations, and preparing for regular rocket launches, they also have to consider how they transport the vehicle after it lands. This is very important as SpaceX plans to increase the frequency of Starship launches and expand the rocket's landing zone. According to the new draft of the Environmental Assessment for SpaceX Starship, Super Heavy released by the FAA, SpaceX proposes to increase Starship Super Heavy landings from up to 10 annual Starship landings and up to 5 annual Super Heavy landings to up to 25 Super Heavy landings and up to 25 Starship landings annually. To keep up with that high landing frequency, in addition to landing at the vertical launch area, meaning the two orbital launch towers, the rocket also can land on floating platforms in the ocean. In 2020, the company, via a subsidiary, bought two retired deep water oil rigs to convert them into floating launch and landing platforms for the Starship rocket system. The platforms, stationed in the Gulf of Mexico near Boca Chica, Texas, would have enabled rapid launch cadence and flights from optimal locations. Although the project was temporarily canceled in February 2023 because SpaceX was first focused on gaining flight experience with Starship before pursuing sea-based solutions. In October of the same year, they brought the project back from the dead. It does make clear their intention to have the Mechazilla Towers at sea, however, the FAA is concerned that the increase in launch cadence would impact the environment, including air quality. When considering the air quality effect of Starship landings, SpaceX expects residual liquid oxygen and methane to remain on Starship, but both of them are not hazardous air pollutants, and whatever remains in the tanks will be vented. It then says, quote, after landing and safing, the breakover fixture assembly, controlled supported drop from vertical to horizontal of the Starship would commence. This essentially implies that after landing, Starship will be turned from vertical to horizontal for transport over water. It would be interesting to see what kind of hardware would be used for such a move. The horizontal transport method is particularly advantageous for moving the Starship over water. This is essential for operations where the vehicle lands offshore, as it allows for safer and more stable transportation to the launch site or recovery area, in scenarios where the Starship needs to be transported from one launch site to another. Such as from Starbase to Cape Canaveral, Elon Musk has mentioned that a barge would be employed for this purpose. The Starship would be transported in a horizontal position to accommodate its size and structural integrity during transit. More importantly, this method is very effective for the transport in the long distance. At the end of July, SpaceX was in the headlines since it was in talks with U.S. and Australian officials to land and recover one of its Starship rockets off Australia's coast. This is a possible first step toward a bigger presence for Elon Musk's company in the region, as the two countries bolster security ties. The plan would be to launch Starship from a SpaceX facility in Texas, land it in the sea off Australia's coast, and recover it on Australian territory. However, there are a lot of very strict military-related stuff regulatory hurdlers and stuff that stops space. 
Therefore, getting permission to do so would require loosening U.S. export controls on sophisticated space technologies bound for Australia. Towing Starship after it has landed in the ocean or on a barge to a nearby port on Australia's western or northern coasts would be ideal, though more specific plans and locations are still being discussed. If the plan succeeds, this could further demonstrate Starship's capability of point-to-point -point delivery around the world in under one hour. This is incredibly amazing. Aside from Starship's transportation mechanism, have you ever wondered how SpaceX transports its other rocket, the Falcon 9, across the country? SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets are manufactured in Hawthorne, California, and transported to Cape Canaveral, Florida for launches. This journey covers approximately 2,500 miles and involves several logistical steps such as the various components of the Falcon 9, including the first stage, second stage, fairings, and landing gear are transported separately on large semi-tractor trailer trucks. Each Merlin engine is sent to McGregor, Texas for inspection and static fire testing before being returned to Hawthorne for integration with the first stage. After the engines are attached to the first stage, the fully assembled first stage is transported to Florida atop a specialized 44-wheeled trailer. This trailer is designed to support the weight and dimensions of the rocket. The second stage and landing gear are transported separately via different trucks. SpaceX coordinates the logistics carefully to ensure all components arrive on time and are ready for assembly. Upon arrival in Florida, the second stage and landing gear are attached to the first stage. The assembled rocket is then moved to the launch pad, where it is hoisted into a vertical position for final preparations before launch. This meticulous transportation and assembly process emphasizes SpaceX's commitment to efficiency and safety in preparing their rockets for flight. Because only Falcon 9's second stage is expendable, so after launching, SpaceX tends to recover the remaining components including fairing and the first stage. The fairing halves come down with parachutes. Initially, SpaceX used ships with large nets to catch them before they hit the water. They later determined that they could allow them to land in the water and retrieve them and still get good reuse. Usability. For the first stage, SpaceX operates a fleet of ocean-going autonomous spaceport drone ships for Falcon 9 missions that are not capable of landing back at the launch site. Falcon 9 missions may require a drone ship landing instead of a return to the launch site due to the weight of the payload or the overall mission profile. SpaceX has three operational drone ships. Just read the instructions and a shortfall of Gravitas operating in the Atlantic for launches from Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And, of course I still love you, operating in the Pacific for supporting missions from Vandenberg Space Force Subbase. Uh, just read the instructions operated in the Pacific Ocean for Vandenberg Air Force's base, launches from 2016 to 2019 before leaving the Port of Los Angeles in August 2019. The autonomous spaceport drone ships is a key early component of SpaceX's objective to significantly lower the price of space launch services through full and rapid reusability, part of the multi-year reusable rocket development program engineered by SpaceX. SpaceX offers three options, depending on launch requirements, landing on land, landing at sea, or expending the first stage, in order to increase performance and cost. Any Falcon flights launched into geostationary orbit or exceeding escape velocity require landing at sea or expending the first stage. Less demanding launches from Florida can return to landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, while less demanding launches from California can return to landing zone 4. Around three-quarters of recovered Falcon boosters land at sea as of 2022. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.